Hello, this is Father Sean of the North Kerry Pastoral Area, and I'd like to read for you the Gospel for this weekend, the 21st weekend of the year, year A. It's in Matthew's Gospel. The Lord be with you. And a reading from the Gospel, the Holy Gospel, according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah the son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, but whatever you bind on earth should be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the, the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. On most 21st birthday cards, if you go shopping to get a card for somebody's 21st birthday on most of them is two big keys keys of the symbolism and have been about the figure 21 or the age 21 since they started making and printing birthday cards in other words that it was a time going back to a time that in a family home that uh, it was only when somebody reached the mature age, as it was looked at, of 21, that they could be trusted with the keys, the keys of their own house. And it was around being trusted. And there are many other ways now of getting the keys of the house, but it is all around trust. No matter what age you are, that you get the keys of your home from your parents. Uh, it is at whatever age it is that, that they can trust that look that the home will be secure and you'll be safe and if anybody gives any of us a set of keys to their home temporarily or permanently really means that look that you're held in trust that their home is secure in the gospel we see jesus giving the keys of heaven to peter and it was Peter that he was entrusting. Yes, he, entrust, he trusted all his disciples, but yet it was Peter who was entrusted with the keys, very symbolically. And what, what was in Peter that wasn't in the other disciples? Uh, because from the few stories that we know from the gospel, Peter was rash. He jumped into the lake, not caring about the depth of water. He betrayed Jesus. No different uh, than uh, Judas betrayed him. Peter denied him. But the difference being with anybody that we, what we know is Peter always repented. He cried bitter tears and he repented. So being entrusted with the keys had nothing to do with being perfect. It wasn't that Peter was perfect. In fact, the, the opposite. Peter was a sinner. Peter loved and he sinned, but he repented. And it was then that Jesus gave him the keys from from this he recognized who jesus was and he gave him 
the keys of the kingdom. And those keys were in the hands of Jesus. And in the hands of Jesus who uh, helped people to understand and see things differently and to hear things differently. And with those keys, Jesus worked and fought against darkness and evil. And he, was, he entrusted Peter with those keys to uh, help the Christian community and the peoples of the world to, to see and hear things as God sees and hears and to work against evil and darkness that we all encounter. And as we listen to that today and reflect on it, we're entrusted with the keys of the kingdom because we are Christians, we are baptised, we gather around the table of the Lord and we are fed with the bread of life. And our role with those keys is to do the same as Jesus did and as Peter did, to build the world, to build the people around us, to, be, uh, to see things differently, to see things as God did and to hear things as God intends us to hear and to work against any evil or darkness that we meet in the world. Can we take just a few moments in thanksgiving for Peter and Jesus, but asking for the grace, uh, the grace to, to use the keys that we have as Christians, the keys of the kingdom, to build Peter up, to build people up. So can we take just a half a minute on our own? Thank you, and we continue in prayer, asking God to grant and to hear our prayers today. And we pray at this time for an end to the pandemic. We pray that God would deliver the human race from the coronavirus, that he would heal those who are ill and inspire those who are developing cures or vaccines. Lord, hear us. We pray for Pope Francis, the successor of Peter. We pray that the Holy Spirit will guide him to inspire us to greater love and service. Lord, hear us. And we pray for the people of our own country, for the people of Ireland this weekend, that we may unite together to beat the coronavirus at this time. And we pray for the pupils and teachers of our schools that they will be safe as they prepare to return to school. Lord, hear us. And as always, we pray for those who have died, our own family members and friends that are always with us in our hearts. And we particularly pray for the repose of the soul of Thomas Moore of Lark Teague Road, who died during the week. And for those whose anniversaries occur at this time, Paddy Stack of Golong, John Patrick O'Connor, Hannah and John King, Jackie Colhan, Aidan Mason, Stephen Leahy and Mary Sheehan. We pray that they will share in the life and love of God forever in heaven. Lord, hear us. And we conclude our prayer with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Amen. Thank you, and we'll connect again next weekend. Thank you.